Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at the most common types of refrigerant compressors. We're going to have a, a review of the four most common types, that being the centrifugal, the screw, the scroll, and the reciprocating. We're going to have a look at the, the real world examples of how these look in, in the plant rooms, so that you can spot these when you're walking around sites. And we'll also have a brief look at how each one works. So the first one we're going to look at is the centrifugal type compressor. The centrifugal type compressor looks a lot like this and is quite easy to spot because it's got this large unit up on the top of the chiller. You've got the suction line coming off of the evaporator and uh, flowing into this volute shape and then off of that comes the refrigerant down into the condenser. So the refrigerant flows in through the suction line, hits into the impeller blades these rotate and that imparts an angular velocity onto the uh, particles of refrigerant and that makes the refrigerant particles fly out at a high velocity in, in this direction uh, into the volute where it increases in pressure uh, from the kinetic energy and then that passes and pushes down into the condenser. So the refrigerant flies in and then uh, as it's flung off of this compressor it travels in all directions just collecting up in that volute and going off into the condenser. And you can see that in this animation here, where the particle here is being flown off, so it enters, this rotates and flings that off and collects in here, building up in pressure and then making its way down to the condenser. This is a very common setup for a central plant in large buildings. A variation of this is the turbo core compressor. That will look something like this, so you've got these small units mounted also to the top of the, compre uh, the chillers usually having at least two of these on the top and these work just like the uh, centrifugal type but they've got two stage compressors inside very small ones and uh, the refrigerant flows in through the front passes through the two different compressors and then the refrigerant uh, exits here and travels down into the condenser now you, these usually have uh, magnetic bearings and electronic motors inside uh, which make these really very efficient. These are, these are going to be becoming uh, a lot more common in the coming years uh, as older technology obviously becomes replaced by this more efficient version. The next site we're going to look at is the screw compressor. Now here's an example of a screw compressor on a chiller and you can see it's this large unit up the top here they're typically insulated, especially if they're on chillers which are indoors or within a plant room. And this takes the refrigerant off of the evaporator. It passes through into the compressor. Inside here is two screws in the main body there. The refrigerant then exits and passes through this tube here. And uh, as it exits, we've got an oil separator here. But then that flows off and then enters into the condenser. These are also fairly common on air cooled chillers. So uh, this is another example of a, a smaller version. So we've got two mounted on this chiller and uh, you can see the refrigerant flowing in there, entering in, enters into the, uh, the, the two screws which are inside here, which we'll have a look at shortly. And that refrigerant after being compressed exits and heads its way off to the condenser. So inside this version, this is the two screws I was talking about. So the refrigerant enters, fills the chamber, and that chamber slowly gets compressed by the next uh, screw passing along, and that compresses the refrigerant uh, up to a very small point, and then that discharges it off to go into the condenser. The next one we'll look at is the scroll type compressor. And this is an example here of a scroll type compressor or chiller. They're pretty common on air cooled chillers. So this is a water type one. And You'll usually find that uh, one uh, compressor isn't enough, so they'll have these banks of them. So these type of compressors, uh, they usually have their inlet at the bottom there, which passes through, and then they've got the outlet exit there. The compression usually takes place right at the very top here in a fairly small chamber, with most of this unit uh, being the motor and stator, which is um, taking up the rest of this unit there. So that refrigerant just comes in through the inlet, makes its way in, passes around the motor through into the scroll. Uh, once it's compressed, it makes its way out and goes off to the condenser. 
So at the top there in the scroll unit, it looks uh, it works a little like this. So uh, the refrigerant enters there. As this scroll is moving, we've got the stator there as well. And the scroll moves slowly at some refrigerant in that slowly gets compressed and compressed and compressed until it gets to the point uh, where it then exits out the top and off into the condenser. And the last one we're going to look at is the reciprocating type compressor. Now these chillers look a bit like this. They're becoming less common. There's a lot more uh, energy efficient technology now, so these are slowly making their way out. But in many existing buildings you could find these. And these are very strong workhorse type uh, compressors. The, these will just run and run for, forever. So with this type you've got the inlet passing the refrigerant in. This section here is the motor and the refrigerant will pass uh, around that or through that and off into the compression chamber. Uh, once it's compressed it then exits through here and off into this pipe to go off to the condenser. And so that works a bit like this. Um, I've drawn the refrigerant just passing through the case here, but it can just pass through the motor to provide uh, cooling for that as well. So the refrigerant enters. You've got these uh, doors here which allow um, the refrigerant to pass in. And then these pistons which are rotating because of this motor compress that. And once it gets to a certain pressure, uh, these valve heads open and that allows the refrigerant to disperse off into the condenser. Now these are very noisy chillers. And the technology is based off of like a combustion chamber for car engines, say. But they are becoming less common. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share. And if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. Once again, thanks for watching.